I'll be honest with you guys, I've been known to purchase a gimmicky item or two in my day, but when I saw the Zenbook Duo, a dual screen laptop from Asus, I thought, okay, this time is different. This time it's actually gonna be useful. But was I right? Are the two 3K 120 Hertz OLED screens really worth the extra bulk and hit to battery life? I mean, yeah, I kind of think so. Let's talk about it. So for this video, we're gonna take a walk in my shoes. You're a bald guy who creates YouTube videos who only really edits on his desktop setup because he hates editing on a laptop. This means that this is gonna be a very subjective review from the perspective of a content creator. If you want stats, here is a chart with some info and tests and uh, yeah, cool. Now, when I say I hate editing on a laptop, it's not simply because I'm limited to a single screen. My main workstation, I just use a single screen for DaVinci anyway. The problem is size and color accuracy of most laptops. On my main workstation, I use a 32 inch 4K monitor, which means my preview window is still plenty big enough to properly edit video. Also, it's just a super accurate display. However, when I switch to my laptop, even my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is a fairly large device, it's still miserable to edit on. Yes, I know some people do it and have no issues, but these are my feelings. And if I didn't have those feelings, this video wouldn't exist, right? So a few weeks ago, I'm browsing the internet looking for stuff to buy like a degenerate tech enthusiast and see the Asus ZenBook Duo show up. My immediate reaction was, that's kind of cool, but why not just buy a portable monitor? Spoiler alert, I actually did that too, but we'll get to that later. But then I thought about it more. You see, I'm a lazy person. I freaking love convenience in any way, shape or form was always fully aware that a second screen would be beneficial for editing on a laptop since DaVinci lets you make an entire display your preview window, but I don't want to carry around a second device and rely on a specific piece of hardware. The ZenBook Duo should solve that though, right? It's got two screens when you need it and functions as a normal laptop when you don't. Perfect. So I ended up buying one of these used on eBay to test this. That's right, Asus didn't send this over anything, I just bought it. All right, so my immediate first impressions with the device, I got it in last night. I installed some apps, that's all I really did, but honestly, I think it passes the premium device test, which is a test I made up in my head that if you're paying a premium price for a product, there's a lot of peas, it should immediately feel like you got your money's worth. And I will say the build quality on this seems pretty fantastic. Nothing's creaking, it feels solid. The hinge on the back is nice, uh, no wobbling or anything. It just feels like a good device. And both of the screens are extremely fantastic. I mean, OLEDs, they're gonna look great. If they don't, that's a problem. Immediately, I can see the use case for this kind of setup and having two screens with your keyboard separate. Uh, I was showing my wife and I was like, oh, look, I could turn it sideways like this. And she was like, okay, well, how do you, how do you stand it up then? I was assuming there was some kind of like extension for the kickstand here to keep them upright, but there isn't. So I kind of wish that that was a thing, but I mean, honestly, I'm never going to use it like that. Through the process of installing apps, I noticed that, or I didn't notice the fan and heat, which is a good thing. Uh, because in a lot of Windows laptops, that's what steers me away from them, is how loud and how hot they get. I don't know if that's a product of the cooling on here or just the uh, Intel Core 9 185H. Uh, some of the downsides, I guess, that I immediately noticed outside of the hinge, but that's not really a downside, I guess. Um, the keyboard, it's a cool concept. It clips on, obviously, and then that changes it automatically from a uh, dual screen to a single screen. Uh, once this is clipped on, right? Or not, it should automatically switch back to a single screen, but it didn't, check it out. It, so this didn't happen before and I've done this quite a few times. So you take it off, it goes into dual screen mode. You put the keyboard back on and it's supposed to go, okay, there we go. I don't know if that was a me problem or maybe the pins need cleaning the contacts, but either way, that's not great. Okay, it worked that time. <clears throat> Outside of what just happened, the keyboard itself isn't the best. What's on my finger? The keyboard itself isn't the best. I mean, it's thin, it's gotta be thin because it detaches and it's gotta go on here and you don't want it to be too bulky. 
it it feels like a fifty dollar Bluetooth uh, Amazon keyboard, and I get it; it's got to be thin, but um, honestly, it's pretty rigid. So that is good. Uh, I'm not a huge keyboard nerd, so it doesn't really bother me. It might bother some other people, whatever. On the topic of bulk, so obviously it has to be a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than a normal 13 inch uh, laptop, which again, I don't mind. It's not unwieldy. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's comically large or anything, but obviously for the trade-off of having two screens, uh, it's gonna have to be a little bit more bulky, but it doesn't seem that bad, honestly. But the thing is, you're not buying this to use it as a regular laptop, right? You're buying it to use it in a dual screen configuration, whether that be for work or for pleasure or for whatever. So I'll be editing the entire video on this device to see not only how the two screens affect that workflow and if it's that much better than a normal laptop, and just see if the hardware in here can handle my normal editing workflow. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Immediate first impressions, TLDR. It feels like a nice machine. It looks fantastic. I can see a few little quirks, but nothing that's a deal breaker. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Over the course of the next few weeks, I started using the ZenBook more often and would find myself picking it up instead of my MacBook. It was just nice having a normal laptop and then if there was some spark of inspiration or I just needed to make an edit on a video, I could just transform it into work mode and get things done. I've now discovered my favorite place to edit is from my bed. I bought this foldable desk thingy off Amazon that makes this possible. After your kids go to bed and my wife and I can go lay in the bed, throw on a show and she can color and I can edit some videos. It's nice. Well, having used this device for around roughly a month now, I have some thoughts. First off, the screens are gorgeous. They're 3K resolution touchscreen OLED, so by nature, they're just gonna look good, but they're also color accurate, which is a must for me. Also, it's just nice that both screens are the exact same and that they stack vertically. Oftentimes, my space is limited horizontally more so than vertically. Surprisingly enough, the Asus bloatware on here is actually pretty useful. The My Asus and Screen Expert apps come with some useful settings and functions like setting an adaptive refresh rate, selecting color profiles, set how you want the second screen to function, and it even has this cool trick where the second screen can mimic your keyboard and trackpad. Never found myself actually needing this, but it's a pretty cool feature. Other thing is that we get full-size HDMI and a USB Type-A port, both of which are useful and unfortunately becoming less common. In terms of performance, while we do lack a dedicated GPU, the i9-185H is just a beast of a chip. Like, I can legit keep my same workflow with a 4K timeline and ProRes footage just like my main 13900K and 4090 workstation, and it handles it just fine. Sure, it's obviously going to have some hiccups and require some things to be proxied, but for what it is, it's great. Moving on to the things that were not so good, but also not bad. The trackpad and keyboard. Look, I get it. They had to make it thin due to the nature of the device, but that doesn't mean I can ignore it. The trackpad is fine. I mean, I think we're past the days where Windows laptops all had terrible trackpads compared to their MacBook counterparts. While the MacBook one is still better, this one's fine. The keyboard is also fine. Are other laptops gonna give you a better experience? Probably. Did I find myself distracted by the quality of this one? No. At no point was I typing and thinking, ew, this thing sucks. And for how thin it is, it's pretty great. For a normal laptop keyboard in 2025, it's probably like a five out of 10. Next is the speakers. This was initially a con right out of the gate. The audio sounded super muffled during dialogue and turning up the volume only made it worse. But then I went into the My Asus settings and saw the audio profile was set to dynamic. After changing this to voice or normal or whatever it was, it was so much better. I'd say overall, after changing the settings, the speakers are pretty good, 7.5 out of 10. Now for the things I didn't really care for. Let's start off with the one that is so first world problem. Both of the USB-C ports are on the left side. I hate this. The main reason I upgraded from my MacBook Air to my MacBook Pro was to get USB-C ports on both sides so that when I use my laptop plugged in, I can charge it from either side. And yes, I know that's petty. Another thing is the keyboard. Not in terms of actually using it, but when you attach it back to the device, it's supposed to automatically turn off the second screen, but sometimes this just doesn't attach right and you have to fiddle with it before all the magic happens. 
And the last thing is battery life. I wouldn't say it's unusable in any stretch of the imagination. In a vacuum, it's actually pretty fun. The problem is that I'm used to using a MacBook where I never have to worry about picking it up and it being low. I don't know what kind of special sauce Apple does, but no Windows machine I've ever used can give me that peace of mind of leaving the house without a charger. If you think those cons are pretty minuscule, then I'd have to agree, which is why I think this machine is fantastic if you need it. Let me say that again. This device is great if you have a specific need for two screens. Do not buy this if that's not the case. There are plenty of normal laptops out there with better keyboards, longer battery life that are thinner, lighter, and just have, you know, just as good as a screen for cheaper. However, if you were in my shoes where you know two screens would improve your workflow, then I think you'd be happy with this. I paid about $1,350 for this one used, which is a few hundred dollars cheaper than retail. And honestly, I don't think that's a bad price for a quality niche product like this. But yeah, for those of you that are looking for something a bit more reasonable, let's go see what's out there. Any ideas where we could look? Preferably somewhere that has a wide selection and the ability to actually get my hands on the devices before buying them. Yeah, it's uh, it's Micro Center. Y'all knew that. But specific reason, uh, we actually want to go to a physical store when shopping for a laptop because it's good to put your hands on it because you're going to be using it a lot and it's hard to convey that for an online purchase. So let's go inside, see what kind of laptops they got. It's hot. So yeah, obviously there's no shortage of laptops in here. They have everything from super affordable systems. Obviously you have the gaming systems. You even have Chromebooks, if that's what you're looking for. I'm not gonna judge you, okay? If you, if you want a Chromebook, they got them. But specifically, I am a cringy YouTube. Uh, I am a, a professional content creator. So I have a different, I guess, use case or wants for my laptop. The main one being a large uh, high resolution screen, thin and light, so that is portable and generally powerful enough, which means which means you can get by with integrated graphics these days. If you do want something with dedicated graphics, it does tend to get bigger, bulkier. So with how good integrated graphics are right now, I'll make that trade off. So one thing I found, or one specific laptop I found here is this Acer Swift Go 16 SFG 16-73-96TC 16 inch laptop. This thing is pretty freaking solid. So. $1,200, you get a just as good, actually better uh, processor with the Ultra 9 285H, 32 gigs of RAM, high resolution screen, 16 inches. And dude, this thing is like hella thin. Like, look at this. This is crazy. And port wise, micro SD, headphone, USB, type A, uh, HDMI, type A, and two type C. Still no uh, type C on both sides. My huge, uh, caveat which i guess a lot of people it doesn't bother them but i really like that usb on both sides but yeah this is a solid option uh it's even oled so yeah awesome device here if you do want to spend a little bit more they do have some options uh so let's go look at those the second option i have over here is this lg gram pro and you do get a slightly lower grade cpu but what you do get is dedicated graphics on here with the rtx 3050 so if you do need that dedicated graphics for a little bit more horsepower when editing or, or gaming or whatever, this would be a good option. It is about a thousand dollars more. Like I said, you know, if you got the money, subscribe to the Patreon, but also you might want this. I mean, that same high resolution 16 inch screen, it's 2.8 pounds and extremely, th I really don't, I really don't know how they did this. This is nuts. Again, bro, nobody wants to put the USB-C on both sides, but, Apparently that doesn't bother people. I'm just gonna stop complaining about it. Anyway, this thing is nuts. Like, I really don't know how they did that. But this is a solid option. But I mean, there's options for everybody out there. If you got the money, if you're looking for something on budget, there's other options. The last one is one that uh, some people have strong, strong, strong feelings about. Okay, yeah, Apple, MacBooks. I personally, daily drive a m1 pro macbook pro 16 inch and i love it uh it just comes down to your preference and your software suite if you want to go uh, with an apple device the macbook air is a fantastic machine it's what i used to have uh so these are nice around a thousand dollars honestly probably the best bang for your buck laptop you can get right now if you want something a bit more power they do have the macbook pros those are awesome but 
again, you know, coming here, getting your hands on them, trying them out, or it's the best way to decide which laptop fits best for you. And why don't you do it at Micro Center? You can come here, get an awesome warranty. They have awesome support. Check it out. And we're going to head back and see um, if the dual screen ZenBook Duo lives up to the hype. Now, some of you have probably been screaming at the screen this whole time. Brett, just get a portable monitor for your existing laptop. And I hear you. And I did that. I bought this 14 inch 1200p one off Amazon for around $100, which actually clips onto your laptop to make it one cohesive piece. And I'll keep it a buck with you guys. I wanted to hate this thing. It's bulky plastic and requires me to use up one of my USB-C ports, but it's actually not bad. And let me be clear, I'm not gonna use this thing, but I wouldn't have any problems recommending it as an alternative. While it does add some bulk, it's not terrible, and the spring mechanism that holds it to your device is pretty secure. The screen itself can be mounted on either side and it can swivel 180 degrees too. I was worried that when I opened my laptop and the screen started falling back due to the extra weight, but then I realized it has a kickstand to prevent this from happening. So yeah, I mean, it's not a premium and sexy solution, but it's fairly well thought out. And guess what? The screen is actually decent. I mean, it's not gonna win any awards, but the colors are pretty accurate right out of the box and doesn't seem like it's doing any goofy oversaturation or anything. For $100, this thing ain't bad, man. But again, for me, I'm not gonna carry this around when the ZenBook exists, but for a budget option, this is solid. So while editing, I'm realizing that I never tested the microphone and webcam on here, and I also forgot to mention that I edited the entire video on the ZenBook Duo. So I guess I'm killing two birds with one stone here. How's it look? How's it sound? This is under professional lighting, and based on the preview screen, it actually looks pretty decent. I don't know how it sounds. You guys be the judge of that. This is with no EQ, nothing. Okay, well, I guess you're probably tired of hearing me talk about this thing. And overall, if you have the money and a reason to use two screens, I 100% recommend this thing. For the other 99% of you, no, you don't need this. For the next gen, maybe I'd like to see a more consistent keyboard attachment mechanism. And I guess any improvement to the keyboard and trackpad would be nice, but I really don't have too much to complain about. What do you think? Are you one of the few people that are looking to get one of these? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see me talk about more stuff, I guess. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my triple screen laptop. Not really sure how that works, but you guys are the best. And if you're still watching, you're Adobe Premiere. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.